the Quran now after this he says وَإِن مِّنكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَّقْضِيًّا ثُمَّ نُنَجِّي الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَنَذَرُوا الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيًّا Which means there is not one of you but will pass over hellfire. There is not one of you but will pass over it, hellfire. This is with your Lord a decree which must be accomplished. Then we shall save those who had taqwa and we shall leave the wrongdoers in hellfire, jithiya, in misery, down on their knees, feebled. وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا there is not one of you but will pass over it. In accordance with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reported by Ibn Jarir from Abdullah, that he said concerning Allah's statement, every one of you will pass it. He said, the bridge over hell is like the sharp edge of a sword. The first group to cross it will pass like a flash of lightning. The second group will pass like the wind. The third group will pass like the fastest horse. The fourth group will pass like the fastest cow. Why are they using horse and cow? Because this was the vehicle used in those days for transportation. So in other words, if we were talking in today's terms, you talk about the vehicles we ride in today, cars and motorbikes and so on. Then the rest will pass while the angels will be saying, Oh Allah, save them, save them! It's about the believers. The Messenger of Allah was once in the house of Hafsa, his wife, anha, when he said, لا يدخل النار أحد شهد بدرا والحديبية أو الحديبية. No one who was present at the battle of Badr and Hudaybiyah of the Muslims will enter into the hellfire. Then حفص رضي الله عنه said, Doesn't Allah say in the Quran, وإن منكم إلا واردها? There is not one of you but will pass over it. The Messenger of Allah replied by reciting. ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا Then we shall save those who had taqwa. The remainder of the verse. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, No one of the Muslims who has had three children, who all died, will be touched by the hellfire, except from an oath that must be fulfilled. What is that oath that must be fulfilled? It is the oath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where He says, Every single person will pass by it. This is a decree that we have promised and it will be accomplished. This is the oath. Meaning, some people will cross and will not be into hellfire. If they were believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, and fulfilled its conditions, and they've had three of their children who had died. They had children before the age of puberty who died. This is a mercy from Allah. One of the blessings which Allah gives on that day, that He will save you from the fire. Because of the sadness and the sorrow that He made you go through in this life, because of your children, but you were patient, Allah rewards you for your patience. So fire will not touch you. Yet even those people whose Allah's mercy reaches, they will pass it. Even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will pass it. Every person will pass the Sirat, this bridge which is bestowed over hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from falling to, into hellfire with it. The people with great light will pass very quick. The people with a little bit of light, they will have it on the edge of their thumb. And it will sometimes light up and at times it will go darkened. And Rasul Sallallahu describes this bridge over hellfire as well, saying, hellfire will be burning underneath somehow. And it has claws that reach it. They try to grab people from there. It's hungry. It has a tongue which comes out as well. And it will scrape people. Some people will cross it, and they have been scraped by the claws of hellfire and burnt. Some of them will fall, and they will be saved later on. And some of them will fall, and they will never be saved. Now here, the disbelievers... When they come to pass it, it means that they will go onto the bridge and then they will fall. They will not be saved. There will be people who were hypocrites. They used to say we're Muslim, but they weren't. And when they see the light on people among the Muslims who they used to know in this life and find and discover how fast they're, 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 they're crossing, they plead to them. They will say to them, Unzuruna. This is in the Quran, in Surah Al Hadid. Unzuruna. Please wait for us. Wait. We used to know you in the former life. In other verses, it says, We used to know you. Unzuruna. Min nurikum. Let us take a little bit of your light, just a little bit. Qila rji'u. Angels will scream at them. Go back. You have no room. Rji'u wara'akum faltamisu nura. Go back and you try and find light behind you. Meaning, what did you leave behind of good deeds for you to find any light? The only light on that day is the light which you put forth. 
and left out and left behind meaning you will find on that day فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورٍ a wall is separated between them and the believers لَهُ بِسُورٍ بَاطِنُهُ فِيهِ الرَّحْمَةِ one side it has mercy وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبَلِهِ الْعَذَابِ and the other side it has torture and torment so these hypocrites will fall and they will be in the lowest of the lowest pits of hellfire even lower than Iblis himself the crossing of this bridge my dear brothers and sisters is a very dark one it's very very dark and only your light will make you cross as we said Allah says then we will save those who had taqwa what is taqwa taqwa is a term used by Allah in the Quran for those people who when they are about to do something wrong they remember Allah they remember his punishment they love Allah so much that they do not want to lose that love so what do they do they physically avoid the forbidden thing and they don't question why is it haram I'm gonna keep doing it until I'm convinced why Allah told you it's not good don't and it also means those who did the wrong but then later on remembered Allah and repented made tawbah these are the people of taqwa these are the people who will be saved when they cross and some of them who fell into hellfire they'll also be saved later on through the intercession as we said of the angels the believers and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now there is a group of people who will reach in accordance to some narrations some sahabas interpreted this verse saying that they will reach a high cliff on the bridge somewhere very high on the cliff but they have not passed yet and they will be stationed there they can't go forward and they are also not falling into hellfire so they're saved from the fire but they can't also go forward they're right in the middle why are they on high cliffs they said because they are called the araf that's their name they are called the araf and in arabic al araf when you refer to urf it generally means a peak somewhere high that's why they said they'll be somewhere high and allah knows best also al araf means those who you know so these people will be known by who they'll be known by the believers and they'll be known by disbelievers who are they they are the people whose good deeds were exactly equal to the amount of their bad deeds. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you did exactly the same amount of good deeds as the amount of bad deeds. No, it means that the value on that day, you might have lesser good deeds, but their value is heavy, or you might have more bad deeds, but their value is less. And so it's equilibrium until they equal on the same on the scale, the same worth. So what happens to them? Their good deeds protect them from the fire, but their bad deeds prevent them from going forward. What happens to these people? Allah is not oppressive. Allah talks about them in the Quran, Surah Al-A'raf. The disbelievers in the hellfire will see them and they begin to give them bad hope. They will say, you're going to fall. And the believers on the other side will say, oh, our Lord save them. What is the point of these who are stationed there? It is one of the hopes which Allah gives in order to show the disbelievers in hellfire more misery. But at the same time, they can't pass because it's unfair. Other people have to beat them. They are left towards the end. Then a voice calls out to the people of hellfire and it will say, as in the Quran, see these people that you knew in the former life, they did some wrong things with you. You thought that we are going to place them with you in here, but today we'll give them our mercy and before your eyes, watch how we will save them. And so Allah will save the people of the Araf and take them over the bridge and they will await at the door of Jannah or they will enter Jannah after the believers. So Allah says to the disbelievers in hellfire, this is one of the torments for them. These people you thought will also put them with you, we've saved them. But you, you don't deserve it. That's how bad your deeds were. That's how bad your belief was. Your Lord is not an oppressor to any of his servants. No one, Muslim or non-Muslim. Now we reach heaven and hell and the entrance of it. So I want to stop here inshallah, heaven and hellfire. But I leave you with this story about the good deeds. There was a man, by the name of Malik ibn Dinar, a great scholar of the past. This man was a thief before he became a scholar and he used to drink alcohol. One day Allah wanted to guide him and one day he saw a tyrant man who had an employee and this employee was poor and the man would not give him his, his wage for the day. So he said to him, give him his wage, Malik ibn Dinar. He had some mercy and the tyrant would not give him. So Malik ibn Dinar took out some wealth and gave it to the poor man and said to him, tell your daughters tonight to make dua for Malik ibn Dinar. They made dua for him. And one day he wanted to get married. No one would give him their daughter because he was a thief and an alcoholic. So he bought a slave. There were slaves in those days. He bought a slave, freed her and married her. 
And then Allah gave him a daughter named Fatima. At the age of five, his daughter died. He loved her so much and he was saddened for her loss. Time passed and one day he saw a dream as if the world had ended. And he saw in front of him the fire. And behind him there was a, a dragon chasing him. He said, I ran away from the dragon and I reached a cliff. And in that cliff I was about to jump, but there was hellfire. So I turned away and the dragon's behind me. He said, I ran and reached the ocean, the sand and the ocean. And there I saw a very old man. He couldn't even speak to me. So he pointed this way and said, go that way. I went and I found a cliff. And in that cliff there were children. And the children called out, Fatima, save your dad. And then I saw my daughter Fatima. She came up to me and she did this with her hand and the dragon faded away. And she said to me, Dad, look, your bad deeds are the dragon. They weren't big enough to save you. And your good deeds are the old man. They're not even enough to save you. The bad deeds are so bad that they're so big. And your good deeds are so bad that they couldn't save you. And then she recited, ألم يأن للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله وما نزل, وما نزل من الحق ولا يكونوا كالذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبل من قبل فطال عليهم الأمد فطال عليهم الأمد فقست قلوبهم وكثير منهم فاسقون which means is it not time for those who believe to turn to Allah سبحانه وتعالى before their hearts harden جزاكم الله خير May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds and ours.